What is up, ladies and gentle mugs? I am Laughing Cowdy. This is LCT10 Cricket Champions League match number four. It's the Chakwal Rajas versus Pindi Pandu's Chakwal, owned by Mosa, I think. Uh, I think that's how you say his name. And uh, uh, Pindi, owned by Asad Raza, the guy who has made most of my Pakistan and PSL kits. There we go. It's going to be a good one. Erasmus and his red plum cheeks. Anyways, here we go. T10, Chakwal Cricket Stadium is where we're at. Chakwal Rajas versus Pindi Pandus. And uh, there are the two lineups. Pretty good lineups. Again, 12th man is yours truly, a fan Shah, for both the teams. And uh, very evenly matched sides. Really don't know who's going to be victorious. I'm going to go with Pindi. But I think Chakwal has a very good chance as well. They've got the Captain Cool on their side, obviously. So that gives them a huge advantage. MSD, that is. And uh, here we go. Pindi have called Tails. It's him, Adwasim, who's captaining Pindi. That's Raul Pindi, for those of you who don't know. But it's heads. MSD getting heads all day, every day, mate. And he's going to choose to bat first. All right. So Hassan Ali will be opening the bowling for Pindi. And it's Tami Mekbal who's facing him. Both these players actually played for Bashar Zalmi in real life. So they're teammates in real life. Run over the wicket, which is a bit surprising. As he did not give any runs in the first two deliveries. Tami Mekbal takes him on. He clears the mid on field and that's gone for four. Guess he should have stuck with around the wicket. He came over the wicket and first delivery dispatched for a boundary. He has moved back, so that's uh, good to see. I guess that's a very good pull shot. There's a fielder, but he's, he's placed it to perfection. He's beaten the fielder, and he gets four runs. That's eight runs off the over. You know what? Hassan Ali won't mind that, to be honest. Eight runs in a T10 is not that bad. Might as well seem to skip I've given him. Self the opening over and that's why he just got himself a wicket as well it's a lovely delivery came back into him. we got a nick but straight on to the stumps there was a catching opportunity as well Sarfaraz made a mess of that but he didn't need to fortunately for Pindi and Thami Mekwal is gone that's a big wicket you know because he is a very dangerous batsman one of the best from Bangladesh Manan Vohara is the next batsman in and we all know how good he can be. Brandon King at the other end. We've seen him play stupendously well in the CPL. Oh my, first delivery that's gone over. One bounce, four runs. That's what I was talking about. He is very good at these formats. He's played a lot in the P uh, IPL and it's one of the biggest leagues in the world. So he's got quite a bit of experience playing these sorts of competitions. Ooh, given a bit too much room, he could not really connect with that and to be honest uh, it, you should be glad he didn't because if he had that would have been a nick I think so at least Mohamed Shami coming into the attack now the captain wanting to retain some of the bowlers for the death overs which is good thinking first delivery full length that's straight to the fielder Shami is very good in real life he's very good in the game too that's a dot two dots back to back it's not out mate not only was the impact outside, I don't even think I was going to go on to hit the stumps. Giving way too much width. It's gone into extra cover. A couple of bounce, one bounce actually, and that's gone over. Four runs. Good shot from Vohra there. He's looking good. Uh, using up his last over here. He has a good start. Oh no, that's a good shot. Vohra, guns. Four runs. It's looking in good nick. That was a played very late. It needed to be, to be honest. But yeah, Mato seemed given himself another over. And that's going to be his last over for the day. Again, similar shot, similar area, similar result. One bounce over the rope. Munnan looking in top nick here. He's the one to watch. He's going to take this game away from them. Like I said, he's a young lad, but he's got lots of experience in these sort of competition. Oh, similar, oh, similar area. Again, it's just a... I mean, he's very experienced as well, and he keeps bowling in that same area where he got punished twice before that. And he just bowled a third one there, and similar result. He's bowled quite straight. Oh, you betcha, Brandon King. He's got that one. 
One bounce over the road, four runs. Still waiting for that big six. Who's gonna get it? King, oh, he swings his bat again into extra cover. No need to run after that one. No need to run or move. That was hit so sweetly. It's gone all the way, four runs. Giving away too much room there. Brandon King is not gonna hold back as that. Oh, just short. I thought he might have cleared the rope. But I was just short, one bounce and four runs. We're looking in good nick. Chakwal, oh that's a very elegant shot from Brandon King showing that he's not all about the slogging. He can play some in time and to perfection like that. Look at that, sweet as a whistle. It's gone, raced away to the boundary. All timing and technique and placement. Just classic textbook cover drive. Good to see the youngsters performing well, you know. King is a up and coming talent and he goes after him again. That's another boundary. He is having way too much fun out there. Liam Plunkett holding his head in his hands because he does not know what to do with him. Mushrafi Murtaza comes into the attack now. There are four over remains and currently they're doing pretty okay. They're not doing exceptionally well but they aren't doing bad either. Nine run rate is pretty good. That would have been a wide if he'd let that one go. It was wavered from Murtaza, but Munnan went after it. Murtaza himself is a very established player. Again, giving him way too much room, and he's gone into extra cover. It's becoming way too easy for him now, especially since these very experienced bowlers are bowling like it's their first time they're bowling in their life. That's just wayward, man. That's not the line to bowl, not to Munnan. All right, on the legs this time, just clears the fielder. Could have been a catching opportunity, but just about clears the fielder and it's gone for four. It's a quick outfield. Two are building quite the partnership. They've gone over 50 and that's gone for four as well. Are these boundaries short or are these two just in very good nick? Because all of them are just one bounce over the rope. They have not cleared the rope though yet. Not a very good over so far from Ortaza, and it's not getting any better. It's not getting any better. That's another boundary. Munnan moves on to 40 with that. He's a very experienced bowler. He's one of the best from Bangladesh, but not his day to day. This, I mean, it can happen to the best of them, really, especially in a format like T10 when the batsman, all the batman, batsman is looking for is boundaries, you know. It can happen. Hassan Ali back into the attack. First delivery is gonna give up a single. Yep, just a single. It's not a bad start for him. First over he bowled, he gave up eight runs, which is, like I said, it's not that bad. Keeping it below 10, that's pretty decent in a T10. They're going just over 10 though. Oh, and he gets the wicket. Munnan is gone, 40 runs he scored. That's a very good innings, but it comes to an end. And Hassan Ali with a slower delivery smashes his stumps out. He's a youngster, but he's got a bit of experience as well in these sort of competitions. In this day and age, to be honest, all of them do. Everybody's playing franchise cricket these days. And Munnan is on his way with a beautiful innings and Chubman Gill now comes out to the middle. Again, very well experienced in the short format of the game. First delivery he faces from Hassan Ali. And it's gone, dispatched. Is that going all the way? Oh no, just about. That's four runs. Very good start. It's giving him a bit too much room again. And Shubman Gill goes after him. That's four more runs. Two bowls, two boundaries, eight runs. It's not looking happy. But um, it's all right though. He has bowled well so far. He can bounce back from it. It's a full toss, low full toss. Shubman Gill put his bat through that one. Still could not clear the rope, but gets four runs. It off pretty well for Hassan Ali, but it's not going to end all that well. Well, he ends it with a dot. That's good. But in the middle, a lot happened. And not quite in the favor of Hassan Ali or the Pindi Pandus. But Jaqual should be happy with that over. Two more overs to go. Liam Plunkett given a chance. Now he gave up 13 in the first one. Amado Asim will be hoping he'll give less than that here, but that's not the kind of start you want if you want to give up less than 13. That's four of the first delivery. Jaqual is in control of this game. They've got wickets. All that he's brought back. He's brought that one back. 
nipped into the batsman, completely deceived him, but it was a bit too high to be given out. Most I should be proud of the boys, they've done well so far and they continue to do well, although that might be out. No, it's gone over. 86 meters, first six of the game. It's come quite late in the innings. But at six, number 14 of the competition. First one in this match, but 14th in the competition. We're running a bit low on sixes. Come on, we've got to, we've got to increase the, <laughs> the count. The six count. Ortiz has given the last over. He was very expensive. Again, gives way too much room. Gill is not going to miss out on that. He goes after and he gets four runs for it. Mashrafim he, 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 Murthaza, he's, he's been the most disappointing player for me so far because I was expecting big things from him. I was expecting him to deliver the goods. He is a very good bowler, like I said, one of the best from Bangladesh. But uh, it's just uh, not his day. They have crossed 100 with that. All oh, right on the leg side, Shubman Gill just swinging. He's not hanging about. He's swinging. He moves on to 20 with that, and Morthaza does not know what to do. He, he is getting a bit of movement, but he's still getting punished. And that's just not a good look. 20 of six deliveries. He's in the groove, mate. Shabman Gill is in the groove. That was a bit wide again, but this time he's played it straight to the fielder. That's a dot. A sigh of relief for Morthaza. We've got three deliveries still to go though. Shabman Gill. Oh, that's a short one and he's played it well. There's a fielder. Will he get to it though? I don't think so. That's gone for four again. That's 12 off the over so far. Pretty good stuff from Shabman Gill. He's shown his class. He's shown it his worth. He's given Mossa everything he's wanted from him. And he's showing the rest of the teams why they made a mistake by not selecting him. There's two deliveries to go, and he's gotten 12 off the over already. Jack Wall is looking very good. That's a straight draw. Oh, that's a very good save, Morthaza. You can tell he really wanted to save that one because he's given way too much runs, and now he's a bit hyped. He's got something going his way now. Last ball of the innings. And it's a dot. Actually, it's a wicket. Wow. What a catch, I didn't, I didn't even realize that's how good that was, that's how close that was, but he's gotten a wicket. Shubman Gill gone, that was a stupendous catch. Reflex, athleticism, look at that. Wow, full stretch dive. And right after bowling, a delivery for a fast bowler, that's not easy to execute, but he's done it, he's done it really well. But it wasn't after a, an absolute beating that he got. Still better than a four though. And Brandon King not out at the end of the innings. He should be proud of the innings he's played. Right, that's a very good score they've put on the board. That's very defendable. 110 is the target for Pindy. And it's gonna take something special to beat that. Especially if you look at the Chakwal bowling lineup, they've got Lasith Malinga, Slinga Renga. It's not going to be easy, but oh, look at that. Hassan Ali coming out, opening the batting. Bit unorthodox, but we know Hassan Ali to play the big shots. We have seen him heave a couple of, couple of them out of the park. So, um, Imad Wasim taking the chance with him. Malinga first delivery and it's a dot to Kale Raul. I mean the message is clear they want Hassan Ali to go out there because they want him to just hit them all out of the park just like that that's four runs. Lovely start. The captain wants him to hit boundaries he wants to get a good start even if he loses a wicket there that's fine as long as he scores quick runs. If Hassan Ali can score like a quick 15 or even 20. All right it's a good shot from Rahul he gets off the mark. We've got Rahul at the other end, so if Hassan Ali can hit a couple big ones and then leave the rest to Rahul, because he is a class batsman, Rahul. We've got a real chance then. Oh, he's gone! He's caught that one. Hassan Ali's gone. That is the trouble with uh, a plan like that, though. If it backfires, it backfires real bad. They've lost a wicket now, and they haven't scored too many runs either. 
And now they're in an even tougher spot than they were at the start of the innings. Adam Millen gets his first wicket of the uh, not only the game but um, the tournament. He's gone four runs only with five deliveries. Fakhar Zaman comes in and he can hit him big. We know he can, but will he though? He has been out of uh, out of touch a bit in the recent games. We've seen him struggle a bit. All right, there's your answer. He's back into it, and that's a six. Quite a way to shush the uh, doubters, <laughs> including yourself. Opening your account with a six, sir. That 600 strike rate he's got at the moment. Lovely stuff. Six number 15. Give me some more of that, Zaman. Come on. One chose to come around the wicket to Zaman. And... Oh, he's gotten them. The short delivery does the trick. Zaman is gone. Zaman is gone on having scored only six. His bad form continues. For a moment there, it looked like he was back, but he's not quite back yet. MSD is not gonna miss those. He's way too class, way too experienced. He's never missing those. He's gone for six of three deliveries, and it is not looking good for Pindi at all. It's looking very good for Chakwal. Adam Millen's doing bits here. He's gotten two wickets in the same over. One of them being a very important wicket of Fakhar Zaman. Now Imad Wasim the skipper have chosen to come down. He's like, you know what, I've had enough of these fools messing about. Let me show you how it's done. Rubel Hussain, the speedster from Bangladesh. He's gonna bowl over number three. All right, first up, Rahul and Rubel. All right, there we go. Any the extra cover. Will it go all the way? I don't think it will. But they should pick up three at least. They are going for it. Oh my! Oh, that was a close one, but they got there in the end. Goes with a short delivery, and it's way too easy for Rahul. 139.8 Ks, that's pretty quick. Not, You know he can bowl quicker than that. He can bowl much quicker than that. But even his slow ones are pretty quick. Oh wow, that's gone. Four runs. So they've chosen to give... MSD has chosen to give Milne his last over. He bowled so well in the first one. He wanted to uh, keep applying the pressure, which is good in some cases, but it can backfire like this here. First delivery, and it's gone for four, although it is just the first delivery. There's still five to go, so he can't make a comeback. But then again, he can get hit for five more boundaries. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfection right there. That is very good. He's placed it between three fielders there. Found the gap somehow, and the rope. It's lovely stuff. So far, it's not looking too good for Millen in this over. Oh, he's gone after him again. And he's found the gap again. He's gotten the boundary again. This is what I was saying. Rahul is a class act. If he hangs about for a bit longer, he will do some real damage, and he's started doing that already. Legendary bowling coming in. And he's been spanked away. There is a fielder there, though. Will he get to it? He gets to it, but not in time to stop it from crossing the rope. And that's four runs. Making a pretty good comeback. They had a very uh, awkward start, but Rahul is taking them on. And he's doing it successfully. That's another four. He's given Pindi a chance in this one. It's very good to see. I love it. I love how there's a Pakistani and Indian on the same side. Batting for the same. Oh, is he gone? Yes, he is. That's caught. On the rope by Rubel Hussain. Imad Wasim is gone. Colin de Granum gets his first wicket. The trap works. I thought he's hit it cleanly, you know, but didn't get all of it. He couldn't clear the field. Uh, took a comfortable catch in the end. Imad have gone for seven only, of eight deliveries. Rahul is still out there though, and as long as he's out there, they've got nothing to worry about. It pays off to have an Indian batsman. They are very good, all of them, really. As you can see, Pakistan, he's not so good at batting. And he goes after it. There is a fielder. Has he cleared him? Oh, yes, he has. Now, that's how... That is what Imad wanted to do, but couldn't quite do it. Like I said, difference between Indian batsmen and Pakistanis. They actually got the job done. 
rather than attempting and failing. That's gone. Six number 16. It's a bit full, but Rahul is up for it. That's gone. Extra cover is looking lovely, juicy. And they're really getting back into this game now. They've lost a, couple, a few wickets here, but Rahul is really taking on the charge and he's leading from the front. Colin has given up a few runs and there's more. He got a wicket as well though, so you can't blame him too much. And Sarfaraz opens his account with a boundary there, four of one delivery. It's very useful, 46 required now of 24 deliveries only. Leach brought back into the attack and he's gotten a wicket. He's gotten the biggest wicket of them all. He's gotten Rahul. Oh wow, that's huge. Leach, where are the specs, mate? I want to see the specs. He does not have the specs on, but it doesn't even matter. He's still got his superpowers. He's gotten him out. That's a huge wicket. And now Pindy's in real trouble because they have lost a real batsman right there. Kale Rahul gone for uh, 40. Asif Ali, he can hit him big, you know, but problem is he doesn't always. But when he does, they are huge. Yeah, yeah. All right. He's played that into the gap. That's gone all the way for four. Lovely stuff. He's got a boundary already. Jack Leach not looking too happy with himself there, but uh, Asif starting off... Um, easing his way into this game it's pretty good to see he does lose his uh, wicket quite awkwardly at times that's what I was talking about he can hit him big but he doesn't often do that Jack Leach strikes again it's the magician from England don't need to waste your review on that one that was a thick edge Lovely collection between uh, behind the stumps from MSD and Jaqual is looking good now. Asif Ali gone for four of only four deliveries. It's not good. You need a lot more than that from him. Shout out Pan is coming in now. He can bat a bit. It's quite a difficult task ahead of him. 42 runs required of 19. First delivery to shout out Pan. He swings his bat because he has to. There is no other option. And he does well. That's four runs. Like I said, he can bat a bit. And he's showing just that here. Give up uh, quite a few runs, but he did get a wicket as well. Oh, has that gone all the way for six? Is that number 17? Yes, it is. 74 meters. Shadapan hits his first six. That's number 17 of the tournament. It's a good one right there in the slot for him to put away. He took full advantage of it. You know what, give me a prediction. How many sixes do you think by the end of the... It's a very good shot into the gap, into the cow corner and goes for four. That is some class stuff right there from Shadab Khan giving his, team, giving his team a chance in this game. But yeah, do let me know how many sixes do you think there will be by the end of this tournament. There will be about 50 odd matches total. 55, I think, something like that. Don't remember exactly now. But about 54, 55 matches total. Sarfaraz did well on the domestic level, and here's another chance. He's got to prove himself, but he's not going to do it. Not today. Lasset Malinga gets him out. It's a very good reflex catch right there. That, that came at him very quickly because Sarfaraz really hit that one. That must have sting his hands a bit. But he's held on to it. And Sarfaraz has gone scoring only five runs. None of the batsmen, other than Rahul obviously, are just sticking around and I think I know why, it's because all of them are Pakistani. We all know how good we can be at batting. Coming around the wicket to him, oh he's played that well, Imam al -Haq coming out so late in the innings. Not much confidence from the captain or the owner, or the coach for that matter. And Imam al -Haq, but he is, uh, he's playing for his spot. And a boundary of the first delivery, second delivery, sorry. So a pretty good start. They need a bit more like that from him. All right, he goes on the leg side this time, and that's four. That's lovely stuff right there. 17 required of seven deliveries now. It's becoming 
very close now and Lasset Malenga is uh, very upset with himself he's given two I mean eight runs two boundaries that is and two deliveries that's very unlike him he's very good normally I mean we have seen him get four wickets back to back twice don't think another bowler has done that even once and he's done it twice he goes full again that's his specialty really the Yorker length but he's been put away and that's the end of his over 13 required in the last over so whoever's bowling it's going to be Rubel Hussain he's got a slingy action as well it's not going to be easy 13 of 6 Imam Al-Haq was pretty good in the last over maybe they should promote him up the order he goes full oh that's close but not close enough it's a good start to the over pretty quick as well 142.6 k's problem with a pace like that is if he gets even a little bit of bat onto it it's gonna fly away he goes full again and that's what I'm talking about he's absolutely spanked it straight down the ground right where it came from nine runs of four now this is getting closer and closer and the scales are tipping in Pindy's favor here it's a very good shot the one to pressure he kept his composure there and he's played it really well through the line straight down the ground it's a proper shot you know not a shot you expect from a tail ender but a top order batsman there we go good length and that's a dot that's good stuff from Rubel Hussain he's gonna put a bit of pressure on Shada Khan here they've still got a very good chance to win it though only nine of three deliveries and if they hit one six that's just three runs remaining but it's not going to be easy not at all that's another dot oh my all right nine of two deliveries now now it's getting really tough because they have to get boundaries of boat deliveries well they don't really can hit a six and then get a three but here we go this is it there's a moment of truth oh he goes after it there's a field I think he has cleared him yes he has he has done the harder part he has hit a six and now it's only three runs of one delivery it sounds easy but it's not easy not it's never easy one delivery three runs I don't know why they don't have more fielders outside of the circle they can have one more outside of the circle and they don't and that's gone that's four runs what an innings that is he's kept calm kept it cool and he has won it for Pindi the Pandus are victorious by four wickets there Shada Khan quite an innings towards the end 29 of 13 Rahul gets the man of the match and deservedly so as he gave Pindi a good start but there it is 109 34 for uh, King 40 for Aurora and 24 from Gill a lot of Indian batting here which is why it was a high scoring game because Indians are good at batting man they're very good historically and currently that's not only got a wicket he was a bit expensive though Wasim got a wicket too. Shami was the only bowler who wasn't that expensive. Seven economy rate and two overs, which is pretty good, but he did not get a wicket. And then Murtaza was just, he was just very poor. I was expecting a lot better from him. Rahul, really good at the top, 40 of 20. And then Shadab Khan at the end. Cannot forget Imam al Haq as well. 13 of four, that's a very useful innings at the end there. So maybe that was the plan all along to have someone who can bat properly at the end because it is T10. You never know how quickly you lose wickets. Lasith Malinga got a wicket. He was a bit expensive. Millen was a bit expensive as well, but he got two wickets. None for Hussain, two for Leach and a wicket for Colin de Granum, And he was the most expensive out of all of them. 13 economy rate, 26 in two overs. And they won it with a loss of six wickets. Use all 10 overs and Rahul gets the man of the match. And that's the end of that. So with that, Pindi is leading that group. Because they will, they're the only one who have won one match. The others have not played yet. But here we go. 
I think all groups, yeah, we've played one match from all the groups now, so we're getting there. Slowly but surely. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And congratulations, Asad Raza, who's the owner of Pindi. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a nice.